All right, so uh, this video is going to finish up Meditation 1. Um, in the first part of Meditation 1, he announces, you know, what he's up to, what he's trying to do. He goes through the argument from illusion. Remember, the idea here is to undermine our faith in our senses or undermine the idea that the senses give us reliable information or that can, the senses can confer certainty um, because he's taking aim at Aristotle's approach towards knowledge. And the argument from the illusion is the, is the first attempt to do that. But it's very clear that Descartes recognizes problems with the argument from illusion. Those problems will become more clear when we go through the other two skeptical arguments that, uh, Aristotle, or that Descartes offers in Meditation 1. The first of them is what we'll call the argument from dreaming. So there's an argument from illusion. There's an argument from dreaming. So um, the idea here is that sometimes when we dream, the dreaming is realistic. Uh, not all the time, and you don't need it to be all the time. Sometimes people try to respond to the argument from dreaming by saying, well, you know, dreams are very often crazy, right? Like bizarre things happen. Um, you know, I had a dream last night where I was riding a dragon to go get ice cream. It's like, well, okay, and so... And I, um, you know, it's very clear I was in a dream. And some people will uh, respond to this argument by saying that, oh, when I dream, I always know. Here's the thing. You can't know that you always know uh, when you're dreaming. To know that you always know when you're dreaming, you would have to um, have a memory of every dream you'd ever had. And you would have to uh, remember that you figured out you were dreaming during the course of the dream. And we have exceptionally good evidence that you don't remember every dream you've ever had. Um, uh, this evidence might not have been available to Descartes, so this might have been a, a more troublesome example for Descartes. But um, we know now that you're dreaming, you know, for hours. Well, not hours. You're dreaming for a long time anyway, during sleep. And you remember only like the last few dreams you have. Right. Um, there's random electrical stuff going on in your brain, causing um, your brain to like sort of create narratives, to create stories that you, in a sense, experience while you're dreaming. But you don't remember all of them. Nobody remembers all their dreams. People who claim that they don't dream do dream. They just don't remember any of theirs. But the difference between them and those of us who do remember dreams is that we remember like what one percent of our dreams and they remember zero. So it's you know, not like the rest of us are special. I will say I myself have never known I was dreaming in a dream um, that I can remember. I've never had, I, I can't remember any dream where in the middle of the dream, I was like, I'm dreaming, this ain't real. I'm always convinced, even when the dreams are bizarre, um, uh, even when the dreams are just like, just talking it through makes it clear this couldn't be real. Uh, nonetheless, I'm, I'm always convinced. Uh, if you're one of those people who are like me are always convinced this argument's easy for you, but even if you're one of those people who, whenever you remember dreaming, you remember that you figured out it was a dream. Maybe you're one of these people who can control your dream once you figure out what's going on in it. Um, if you're one of those people, you might object to this argument at first, but you shouldn't because you should know that you have lots more dreams than you remember. And it's um, very likely that in all those dreams, you've had at least a few where uh, the dreams were lifelike and where you didn't know it was a dream. So we can put the first premise this way. We are sometimes deceived by dreams. The idea is while you're dreaming, if it's one of these dreams that um, is lifelike and where you don't figure out that you're dreaming. While you're dreaming, you think you're awake. You think all these things are really happening. You have a bunch of false beliefs. In the same way that when you're subject to illusion, you have false beliefs. If you see a mirage in the desert, you believe there's water somewhere there isn't water. Uh, when you're dreaming, you think you're riding a dragon to go get ice cream when there's no such thing as dragons. Right? And you wouldn't take a dragon to get ice cream. So sometimes we are deceived by dreams. Um, now, if this was going to be the exact same argument, you would just have the second premise be the exact same, right? We should not believe something which has deceived us even once. But that's not the way um, uh, 
Descartes goes with it. Because there's an important difference between the dreaming argument and the argument from illusion. Um, and it can kind of be summed up like this. We don't know that we are dreaming when we dream. The difference here is that when it comes to illusions, you can know when you're in a situation where you're prone to uh, suffer from an illusion, right? If you're in the desert and you see water, you should think to yourself, that's probably not really water, at least not until you get up close, right? You can know that you're in the kind of situation where your senses will be deceived. And that means that if you're being fully rational about the whole thing, then the illusions don't actually present that much of a threat because you can know when you're in a scenario where the illusion is happening. What Descartes thinks is, if the dream's lifelike, if it's not one of these crazy weird dreams, you can't know that you're in the dream while you're in it. You can know after, but you can't know during. Um, another way to put that is put it in parentheses here. Dreaming can be indistinguishable from real life. Now, I've read some stuff that suggests that's not true. So I've read stuff that suggests that uh, um, writing on pages won't show up properly in any dream. I've read stuff that suggests that clocks won't display consistently in a dream so that like you won't have a consistent passage of time on a clock if you're dreaming about a clock in a dream. I've seen stuff like that. Um, I don't know whether that's true. I don't know what kind of evidence the people who claim that it's true give for it. Um, this uh, seems like some people remember weird stuff happening with clocks and saying everybody's like this. But even if that's the case, right, you could just make the subset of dreams that we're talking about here Dreams that don't involve books and don't involve um, clocks to make the same point. However, it would cut against some of what Descartes wants to do with this. Because besides this claim about the inability to distinguish between a dream and real life, um, that not showing up in an illusion, right, in, uh, in the argument from illusions, there's also this issue that the argument from illusion only seems like it can undermine your faith in your senses in a particular set of cases. Not only can you know when you're in a situation where you're more likely to be suffering from an illusion than um, you know normal situations, you also know that there are some situations where there is no known tendency to suffer from an, a visual, auditory, other sensory illusions. And so there's less put under threat by the argument from illusion. Right? And importantly, it seems like the argument from illusion won't put anything under threat that matters because remember who his target is here. His target, without saying it, is Aristotle. Aristotle thinks the fundamental principles of demonstration all rest on observational evidence. He's trying to undermine that observational evidence. He's trying to show that the fundamental principles of demonstration can't be derived or can't derive their justification from the senses. But none of the things that we suffer illusions with regards to, like bent sticks in water or cylinders appearing um, uh, non-cylindrical from far away, or you know colors seeming um, odd in certain light, right? none of that seems like it's going to threaten the kinds of principles that Aristotle would want to claim are the fundamental principles of demonstration. Right? These are going to be incredibly general incredibly um, abstract claims, uh, something like um, all living things move under their own power. That might be a fundamental principle of demonstration. I'm not sure actually whether Aristotle would count that, but it's the kind of thing he would count. And like illusions aren't, aren't going to be relevant to that. But the question here when it comes to dreaming, or the issue here when it comes to dreaming, could conceivably threaten those. Because dreaming holds out the possibility that every, or any rather, um, any observation you've ever made could have been a dream. That you could be dreaming right now, right? You've probably had this experience before 
where you dream that you wake up, but then you actually wake up and you have that moment of being like, wait, did, didn't I just do this? Was that a dream? Am I dreaming now? Am I going to wake up again in five seconds? Right. You, um, you probably had that experience. You've experienced that moment where you're like, I don't know whether I'm in a dream or not. The movie Inception is really good at, at this, at, at making this point that it seems like you can be in a situation where you have no idea whether you're in a dream or not. That there's no way to know for sure you're not dreaming right now. And also that there's no way to know for sure you weren't dreaming the last time, right? You uh, had some observation, right? So for anything you base on a current or past observation, there's always some chance that you were uh, dreaming and that you wouldn't be able to know the difference. Now, this falls apart a little bit when you start thinking about, you know, um, large sections of your life. You might think, well, at any given moment, I might be dreaming. Like, I might be having the most boring dream in the world of making a video for class where I have to wake up and then I still have to make the video. And hopefully I'll do a better job with the handwriting when I do it for real. Right? That would be a boring dream. It could happen. Right? Whatever. But... Like, I have um, a decade of experiences being a parent. That leads me to think I know some things about being a parent based on experience. And I suppose it's possible that that was all a dream. But that does um, sort of stretch credibility a little bit. I've never had a dream like that, right? And what Descartes is basing these arguments on is possibilities that we're already aware exist. So we're already aware that illusions are a thing. We're already aware that dreams are a thing, right? It's very important to him that it be possible, not likely, but possible, that you're in the kind of situation he's talking about, where you're in the situation where you're suffering from an illusion, or you're in the situation where you're dreaming. It has to be at least possible. Otherwise, you can just rule out these arguments entirely if he can't establish the claim that it's possible that you're in what we'll call a skeptical scenario at any given moment. Right? But it's not clear that it's possible to dream for 10 years. Maybe it is, but we don't have any particular reason to think so. I'm assuming, assuming none of us have had dreams where the dreams last multiple years. Right. And I don't mean multiple real years, but where like you go to sleep one night and you wake up the next morning and you've had 10 years of experience in a dream in that time. Right. So the, if you push on this, it might not quite work. Um, so we have, uh, but going back to the argument, we sometimes are deceived by dreams. We don't know that we are dreaming when we dream, or in other words, dreaming can be indistinguishable from real life. So we could be dreaming right now. Let's say um, at any time instead of right now. If you are dreaming, oops, forgot the word are. If you are dreaming, your beliefs are false. We'll come back to four in a minute. Um, if you are dreaming, your beliefs are false. So it's possible your beliefs are false. So you don't know that they're true. Now, I'm skipping over some important steps here to keep the argument of a manageable length. Uh, in particular, I'm skipping over the fact that um, Descartes appealing to a principle like two in the transition between five and six. Right? From the fact that it's possible that your beliefs are false to go to so you don't know that they are true, that um, seems to require that to know that something's true, you have to be 100% sure it's not false, um, which is basically that certainty demand again, which is what two 
expresses this. Uh, uh, and what he sort of expressed a commitment to right at the beginning of the meditation, uh, to be completely error-free. So there's a step missing there. Um, there's other steps missing. But the basic idea here is that dreaming presents a way that your beliefs could be false because you could be in a skeptical scenario. And a, the, a skeptical scenario is one that presents as though it's real life but it's not real, and so your beliefs about that scenario are false, and you have no way of knowing whether you're in that scenario or not. Dreaming, he thinks, is that kind of scenario. This argument is better in a lot of ways from the argument for illusion. It potentially threatens more, so argument from illusion threatens like a belief here or there. Um, the argument from illusion also doesn't even plausibly present a skeptical scenario because it seems like it's possible for you to know that you're in a situation where illusions are possible. Um, and importantly, to know when you're not in that scenario. Dreaming seems like it holds out the possibility that you could be in a dream and have no idea. And even if the idea, the point is raised, like what if we're dreaming, you would have no way of knowing, no way of checking. So it's a lot better argument than the argument from illusion, but it's not the best argument. He's going to move on to another one, the evil demon argument. Uh, and that argument is, um, most people agree, the most, one of the most powerful skeptical arguments ever developed. 